everyone, welcome to LARP Ride. Today I'm going to show you how to make an axe. Doesn't really matter, you want to make a smaller axe or an even larger one, it's all the same process. Also, you should watch this in addition to my last video how to make a LARP sword or dagger. Because I won't repeat the techniques I already showed in that video and instead focus on the particularities of an axe. Also, if you want to make a hammer or pole arm, you need very similar techniques, so you will also want to watch this. Let's get started. I already prepared my fiberglass core, which is 10 mm thick and I glue to it the uh, inner piece of my X-blade. Now I'm going to reinforce it with Kevlar and epoxy glue. I've already cleaned the core and the foam with uh, washing gasoline and now I'm mixing some two component epoxy glue. You will need a lot of that, so buy a big portion, mix a lot of it. And I apply that to fiberglass core, of course, and about 5 centimeters of the X blade itself. This is to keep the X blade from ripping off. And I don't want it all the way along the blade, just near the core where enemy weapons usually get stuck and rip off your blade. The other side as well. I glued some paper to my table here to uh, keep the table reasonably clean. Here I already have to mix more of my two component glue and I'm using some tape to keep the glass fiber tight while the glue is drying. Again about five centimeters into the blade. And I do not only apply the glue on the foam in the core, but also on the outside of my Kevlar mat. So it is completely soaked and covered in the epoxy. And again, I'm using my tape to a Here, I'm gluing in a second layer of Kevlar reinforcement. That is probably overkill, but because this is a large two-handed axe, I want to be able to pull down enemy weapons and enemy shields to make him lower his guard so my comrades can then smack him with their weapons. And this double reinforcement just for the 5 centimeters at the fiberglass core gives the axe the strength to do that. So once the glue sets this becomes really sturdy. After this has dried overnight, I remove my masking tape and now that the glue has set, it is really strong, almost impossible to rip off or break off. Now it's time to cover the X handle and foam. At first, I'm trimming off some of this excess Kevlar with my carpet knife. Could also use a pair of scissors, and I just don't want anything protruding past the foam. It's all right if it goes right to the edge of the foam because this is not a striking surface. 
only uh, the edge of the X blade itself will ever really make contact with your enemy. So if uh, it is going right to the edge at the top of the X or at the bottom of the X blade, it's not. I have covered the X handle and thrown from all sides. Nothing special here, usual sandwich process and no further reinforcements. And it doesn't go past the fiberglass core on the top or the bottom. I will just glue a single uh, disc, a single sheet of foam to the top and the bottom. And because uh, those are not really striking surfaces and you only hit the enemy of the X-Blade, it doesn't need to be reinforced. And here I am rounding off my shaft because in my next step I will wrap another layer of foam around the X-Blade. So now I'm marking on my foam where the X-Blade will go, how it will wrap around. And I leave a lot of extra because I can always cut off excess material but it's hard to add anything. So this piece is actually way too big. Again, if you glue anything together make sure the surface is rough. So I'm roughing out the two component glue here. And for this wrap I wanted to use my 6mm PZ45 but I ran out so this is actually 4mm thin Iwasoti which makes for an X blade that is a bit thinner I don't mind. Could also grind the X blade to shape once you finished gluing it together but with this I didn't have to grind much. And as usual, I'm using my Quibble Fix as a contact glue and this roll of tape to keep the X from the table so it doesn't stick to the table. Again, make sure the surfaces are rough, clean, and apply the glue to both sides if you want to stick together. You don't need a lot of it, just a thin layer is good enough. about 10 minutes and the glue is dry to the touch. You want to glue it together. Make sure you are in the center. It's hard to correct mistakes at this point. And I wrap it around and make sure that at the joint from the X handle to the X plate it goes into the depression and really follows the curve of the X handle, the round curve of the X handle and the flat of the X blade so that there's no gap left between the outer foam layer and the inner foam layer. Now I'm just trimming off the excess material. It's pretty easy using scissors. Just make sure you don't trim off too much or cut too deep because then you would have to repair that. Again, press it together firmly, make sure the glue really sticks. And now I put it down to rest overnight and I put it between a piece of foam, another piece of foam, board and I use an anvil as a weight. And this is 
So the depression at the joint from the X blade to the X shaft will be pressed together and allows the glue to set. Let this set overnight. As you can see, there's no gap left at the joint. It's really tight, just like I wanted it. So now it's time to grind the X blade to shape. First, I'm refining the shape of the X blade. Make sure that all of the edges are flush and then I'm grinding in the actual edge of the blade. Make sure it's symmetrical, check a lot. And it doesn't have to be really thin or sharp at all. You just want to give an impression that the axe is actually sharpened and actually has an edge, but of course it's made with foam, so it doesn't need an edge at all. The corners can be a bit tricky, because they are very flexible. I won't show you several steps, like how I will glue a 10mm thick piece of foam, a round piece of foam, to the top and the bottom of the shaft or how I will paint most of the axe. I will paint the blade with the die brush and everything, but I will show you how I paint the shaft. I want to give the impression that the handle is made from actual wood. So I'm using a technique that gives at least a bit of an impression that there is a grain structure in the wood. Here I'm just carefully painting the top piece, the 10mm piece I glued to the top. Here I'm spinning this large brush to give it a bit of a grain structure. The brown color will not fully cover the black grounding, so if I'm using a brush like this, there will be places where the color, the brown color is not as thick as in other places. So that will give me a pattern, a brush pattern that looks at least a bit like wood grain. Other people are far better at this than I am and can paint a pattern that really looks like wood. But this technique I'm using is simple to use and gives me something that still looks better than 90% of X handles you will find out there. Yeah, I'm using a lot of color, but I'm spreading it with long strokes and I'm turning the handle a bit so my pattern doesn't become perfectly straight, but has a bit of an imperfection, a bit of a twist to it, like real wood would have. And as long as the paint is still wet, you can 
draw in this pattern by making a long stroke all over the shaft. Here's some detail work right at the top. The next step will be to seal your weapon with isoflex, which I won't show you either. And then it's time for the handle. I left uh, just enough space for a short handle at the bottom of the handle, where it's still white. And that is mainly because I need a place where I can mount the weapon while I am painting it. If you want to paint the whole handle, it becomes really troublesome to mount the weapon anywhere. But as I will cover the handle with leather anyhow, I don't need to paint all of it. Just the parts that won't be covered in leather. Again, long strokes. And I twist the brush a bit, give the pattern a bit of a curve, a bit of an imperfection. So now it's time to make the handle and I'm gluing a small piece of leather I cut in at the corners because an X this size will often be used like a walking stick and I will use it like that. So you have to make sure that the bottom is really sturdy. Now I'm wrapping the handle and I don't have a single piece of leather that was big enough to make a strip to cover the leather. So I will wrap it with several pieces of leather and the ends of these strips are cut at an angle and that is so that at the beginning and the end of the strip it will actually stick to the weapon at right angle. And I'm overlapping it just a bit, just a few millimeters. And I'm using hot glue here. You could also use your Kuvel fix, but I find that hot glue is good enough for this job. If you make shorter eggs that won't be used as a walking stick, you may want to paint the bottom of the axe and then just wrap a small portion of the handle. And this finishes the axe. If you like this video, please like it down below and let me know in the comments. And if you want to see more like it, subscribe to my channel down below. Thanks and goodbye.